In our previous video, we already started on the kinds of conditional obligations. How's your encounter with obligation subject to suspensive and resolutory conditions? Let's learn more about them. The question that we were not able to answer last time is What happens when there is a loss, deterioration, or improvement of the determinate thing before the fulfillment of the suspensive or resolutory condition? Let's recall the example under an obligation subject to suspensive condition. Anton shall give Henry a car with plate number ABCD14 if Henry will be able to reach the sales of 10 million pesos for the year 2020. Upon fulfillment of the condition, Anton shall be considered as the debtor with the obligation to deliver the car to the creditor, Henry. What if, before the fulfillment of the condition, the car was lost? There is a loss of the thing when it perishes, goes out of commerce, or disappears in such a way that its existence is unknown or cannot be recovered. For instance, before delivery, a tsunami engulfs the city, sweeping off all the objects therein, including the car which Anton promised to deliver to Henry upon fulfillment of the condition. If the car perishes before the happening of the condition, which in this case is to achieve the 10 million peso sales for 2020, without the debtor Anton's fault, then the obligation is extinguished. However, if it is with Anton's fault such that Anton lit a cigarette while filling up the car with gasoline, causing the car to explode, then Anton is obliged to pay damages should Henry be able to reach the 10 million sales for 2020. What if the car deteriorated before the happening of the condition? If it is without Anton's fault, such as in case of ordinary wear and tear, then Henry shall bear the impairment when he later fulfills the condition and Anton will not be liable for damages. However, if the deterioration is with Anton's fault, such that before delivery, Anton was reckless in driving, causing the car to bump into a wall, badly damaging the said car and reducing its value from 1 million pesos to 900,000 pesos. Then, Henry has the option upon fulfillment of the condition either to rescind or cancel the obligation plus damages or to demand the fulfillment of the obligation plus damages. In the first option, Anton shall be liable for the value of the car before its deterioration, which is 1 million pesos plus incidental damages. While in the second option, Anton is bound to give Henry the car and pay the impairment suffered by Henry, amounting to 100,000 pesos plus incidental damages. Mm -mm. How about if instead of deterioration, there is improvement of the thing? If the improvement is by nature or by time, then the improvement shall inure to the benefit of the creditor. For instance, the car promised by Anton to be delivered to Henry upon fulfillment of the condition is a vintage car, and the value of which increases over time. Such increase in the value of the car shall inure to the benefit of Henry should the condition be fulfilled. However, if the improvement is at the expense of the debtor, then the debtor has the right to use the thing and its improvement until the happening of the condition. For example, Anton had the car reconditioned and its car seats upholstered. Then, Anton has the right to use the car and its improvement until the fulfillment of the condition. He may also remove the improvement if it will not cause damage to the car. But, if the removal shall cause damage, then Anton 
shall deliver the car to Henry with the improvements without the right for indemnity. But, if before Anton's delivery of the car to Henry, he had caused some scratches in the car, then Anton may set off the costs of reconditioning the car against the costs of the damages to the car. In the case of obligations subject to resolutory conditions, for example, Anton agreed that Henry shall use Anton's car until Henry is able to reach 10 million peso sales. Upon reaching the 10 million peso sales, Henry has the obligation to return the car to Anton. What happens if there is loss, deterioration, or improvement before the happening of the condition? Well, the same rules that we have mentioned a while ago shall be followed. Only that in this case, Henry becomes the debtor who is bound to return the car and Anton becomes the creditor who has the right to demand the return of the car. Let's continue our discussion on the kinds of conditional obligation in our next video.